Hey, we're stuck in traffic with Wolf Gorlick, a couple minute riff on IT and IT security. You know, let's be honest, <laughs> things don't always work. Uh, sometimes just unintentionally, but also sometimes too because of deliberate decisions. Deliberate decisions made with fundamental trade-offs. As we know, security always has uh, a cost and sometimes that cost is too much. And sometimes when those decisions are made, they leave the system open to compromise. Now understanding those decisions, understanding what those compromise points are, is really the key to any good uh, security tactician. Notice I didn't say strategist. When I'm thinking about security strategy, that's big picture, where are we going, where, where are we doing? But from a tactical perspective, knowing the ins and outs of our controls very, very well is critical to knowing where those gaps are and figuring out tactically what we need to do, if anything, to make a better um, system. So, for example, perfect example. There is an article out touting a brand new uh, attack against AppLocker. Attack. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I laughed because it was something that was well known at the time that AppLocker uh, was put out. As a matter of fact, I, I played with this attack. I uh, spoke about this similar attack vector at Gurkhan. Uh, using a slightly different app. I'll tell you why about that app in a moment. But the, the attack vector uh, in this particular article is RegServe32, which as you may or may not know within Windows is used to register processes and, and write into the registry. So um, what happens with AppLocker, AppLocker's application whitelisting. Application whitelisting only allows certain applications to run either from a folder or from a signature based or what have you. And if it's not that application, then it can't run. Beautiful, beautiful app. Application, or beautiful control. Application whitelisting is, is incredibly powerful when used properly because then bad guys can't sneak malware on your system. Then bad guys can't execute things afterwards. Then bad guys can establish persistence. However, the question becomes, when do you check? When do you check to make sure that application can run? A design decision was made long, long ago uh, with AppLocker to check when the process was initiated. Why? Because if you check multiple times as the process is executing, that's gonna slow things down. It's a performance decision. It's a performance trade-off. So you check when the process is launched, uh, and that process launch occurs when the process is executed, but not necessarily when a sub-process is called. So why this works within Windows is the process is already running with the RegServe issue. The process is already running, you're using it to start a sub-process, and that sub-process doesn't get checked. Make sense? My, uh, my demo that I did way back when was, uh, was with Microsoft Word. Uh, because I'm I am uh, nostalgic <laughs> because I like history and because I uh, I really didn't like the Melissa virus right the I love you letter the I love you letter that came in Microsoft Word and, and was sent out and was a macro attack I always thought that was cool so my version did basically the same thing we had the Word document you ran a macro and that launched whatever you wanted to bottom line is yes AppLocker can be bypassed by having a process call another process Yes, that's a known attack factor. Yes, it's a design decision. Uh, you can go through and list all the different ways that can happen, but there are a lot of them. And sometimes that happens. That's the nature of any control. Understanding that flaw allows us to think about counterbalancing, um, doing other things around uh, what the user can do, and allows us to realize that you know any application security his best effort, and that's why we have multiple layers. Fun one though, check it out, play with it, have some fun. Talk to you later.